a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Richard Nixon Richard Milhouse Nixon was the 37th President of the United States from 1969 until his resignation in 1974, the only president to resign from office. He had previously served as the 36th Vice President of the United States from 1953 to 1961, and prior to that as a U.S. Representative and also Senator from California. Nixon was born in Yorba Linda, California. After completing his undergraduate studies at Whittier College, he graduated from Duke University School of Law in 1937 and returned to California to practice law. He and his wife Pat moved to Washington in 1942 to work for the federal government. He subsequently served on active duty in the U.S. Navy Reserve during World War II. Nixon was elected to the House of Representatives in 1946 and to the Senate in 1950. His pursuit of the Hiss case established his reputation as a leading anti-communist and elevated him to national prominence. He was the running mate of Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Republican Party presidential nominee in the 1952 election. Nixon served for eight years as vice president, becoming the second youngest vice president in history at age 40. He waged an unsuccessful presidential campaign in 1960, narrowly losing to John F. Kennedy, and lost a race for governor of California to Pat Brown in 1962. In 1968, he ran for the presidency again and was elected, defeating incumbent Vice President Hubert Humphrey. Nixon ended American involvement in the war in Vietnam in 1973 and brought the American powers home, and ended the military draft. Nixon's visit to China in 1972 eventually led to diplomatic relations between the two nations and he initiated détente and the anti-ballistic missile treaty with the Soviet Union the same year. His administration generally transferred power from Washington, D.C. to the states. He imposed wage and price controls for 90 days, enforced desegregation of southern schools, established the Environmental Protection Agency and began the war on cancer. Nixon also presided over the Apollo 11 moon landing, which signaled the end of the moon race. He was re-elected in one of the largest electoral landslides in U.S. history in 1972 when he defeated George McGovern. In his second term, Nixon ordered an airlift to resupply Israeli losses in the Yom Kippur War, resulting in the restart of the Middle East peace process and an oil crisis at home. The Nixon administration supported a coup in Chile that ousted the government of Salvador Allende and propelled Augusto Pinochet to power. By late 1973, the Watergate scandal escalated, costing Nixon much of his political support. On August 9, 1974, he resigned in the face of almost certain impeachment and removal from office. After his resignation, he was issued a controversial pardon by his successor, Gerald Ford. In 20 years of retirement, Nixon wrote nine books and undertook many foreign trips, helping to rehabilitate his image into that of elder statesman. He suffered a debilitating stroke on April 18, 1994 and died four days later at the age of 81. Early Life Richard Milhouse Nixon was born on January 9, 1913 in Yorba Linda, California, in a house that was built by his father. His parents were Hannah Nixon and Francis A. Nixon. His mother was a Quaker, and his father converted from Methodism to the Quaker faith. Nixon was a descendant of the early American settler, Thomas Cornell, who was also an ancestor of Ezra Cornell, the founder of Cornell University, as well as of Jimmy Carter and Bill Gates. Nixon's upbringing was marked by evangelical Quaker observances of the time, such as refraining from alcohol, dancing, and swearing. Nixon had four brothers, Harold, Donald, Arthur, and Edward. Four of the five Nixon boys were named after kings who had ruled in historical or legendary Britain. Richard, for example, was named after Richard the Lionheart. Nixon's early life was marked by hardship, and he later quoted a saying of Eisenhower to describe his boyhood. We were poor, but the glory of it was we didn't know it. The Nixon family ranch failed in 1922 and the family moved to Whittier, California. In an area with many Quakers, Frank Nixon opened a grocery store and gas station. 
Richard's younger brother Arthur died in 1925 at the age of seven after a short illness. At the age of 12, a spot was found on Richard's lung, and, with a family history of tuberculosis, he was forbidden to play sports. Eventually, the spot was found to be scar tissue from an early bout of pneumonia. Primary and Secondary Education Young Richard attended East Whittier Elementary School, where he was president of his eighth grade class. His parents believed that attending Whittier High School had caused Richard's older brother Harold to live a dissolute lifestyle before he fell ill of tuberculosis. So they sent Richard to the larger Fullerton Union High School. He had to ride a school bus for an hour each way during his freshman year, and he received excellent grades. Later, he lived with an aunt in Fullerton during the week. He played junior varsity football, and seldom missed a practice, even though he was rarely used in games. He had greater success as a debater, winning a number of championships and taking his only formal tutelage in public speaking from Fullerton's head of English, H. Lynn Scheller. Nixon later remembered Scheller's words, remember, speaking is conversation. Don't shout at people. Talk to them. Converse with them. Nixon stated that he tried to use the conversational tone as much as possible. At the start of his junior year beginning in September 1928, Richard's parents permitted him to transfer to Whittier High School. At Whittier High, Nixon suffered his first electoral defeat, for student body president. He often rose at 4 a.m. to drive the family truck into Los Angeles and purchase vegetables at the market. He then drove to the store to wash and display them, before going to school. Harold had been diagnosed with tuberculosis the previous year. When their mother took him to Arizona in the hopes of improving his health, the demands on Richard increased, causing him to give up football. Nevertheless, Richard graduated from Whittier High third in his class of 207 students. Collegiate and Law School Education Nixon was offered a tuition grant to attend Harvard University, but Harold's continued illness and the need for their mother to care for him meant Richard was needed at the store. He remained in his hometown and attended Whittier College, his expenses there covered by a bequest from his maternal grandfather. Nixon played for the basketball team. He also tried out for football, but lacked the size to play. He remained on the team as a substitute and was noted for his enthusiasm. Instead of fraternities and sororities, Whittier had literary societies. Nixon was snubbed by the only one for men, the Franklins. Many members of the Franklins were from prominent families, but Nixon was not. He responded by helping to found a new society, the Orthogonian Society. In addition to the society, schoolwork, and work at the store, Nixon found time for a large number of extracurricular activities, becoming a champion debater and gaining a reputation as a hard worker. In 1933, he became engaged to Ola Florence Welch, daughter of the Whittier police chief. The two broke up in 1935. After his graduation from Whittier in 1934, Nixon received a full scholarship to attend Duke University School of Law. The school was new and sought to attract top students by offering scholarships. It paid high salaries to its professors, many of whom had national or international reputations. The number of scholarships was greatly reduced for second and third year students, forcing recipients into intense competition. Nixon not only kept his scholarship, but was elected president of the Duke Bar Association, inducted into the Order of the Coif, and graduated third in his class in June 1937. Early career and marriage After graduating from Duke, Nixon initially hoped to join the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He received no response to his letter of application and learned years later that he had been hired. But his appointment had been cancelled at the last minute due to budget cuts. Instead, he returned to California and was admitted to the bar in 1937. He began practicing in Whittier with the law firm Wingert & Bewley, working on commercial litigation for local petroleum companies and other corporate matters, as well as on wills, in later years. Nixon proudly stated that he was the only modern president to have previously worked as a practicing attorney. 
Nixon was reluctant to work on divorce cases, disliking Frank's sexual talk from women. In 1938, he opened up his own branch of Wingate and Bewley in La Habra, California, and became a full partner in the firm the following year. In January 1938, Nixon was cast in the Whittier Community Players production of The Dark Tower. There he played opposite a high school teacher named Thelma, Pat, Ryan. Nixon described it in his memoirs as, a case of love at first sight, for Nixon only, as Pat Ryan turned down the young lawyer several times before agreeing to date him. Once they began their courtship, Ryan was reluctant to marry Nixon. They dated for two years before she assented to his proposal. They wed in a small ceremony on June 21, 1940. After a honeymoon in Mexico, the Nixons began their married life in Whittier. They had two daughters, Trisha and Julie. World War II In January 1942, the couple moved to Washington, D.C., where Nixon took a job at the Office of Price Administration. In his political campaigns, Nixon would suggest that this was his response to Pearl Harbor. But he had sought the position throughout the latter part of 1941. Both Nixon and his wife believed he was limiting his prospects by remaining in Whittier. He was assigned to the tire rationing division, where he was tasked with replying to correspondents. He did not enjoy the role, and four months later, applied to join the United States Navy. As a birthright Quaker, he could have claimed exemption from the draft. He might also have been deferred, because he worked in government service. But instead of exploiting his circumstance, Nixon sought a commission in the Navy. His application was successful, and he was appointed a lieutenant junior grade in the U.S. Naval Reserve on June 15, 1942. In October 1942, he was assigned as aide to the commander of the Naval Air Station at Tumwa in Iowa until May 1943. On October 1, 1943, Nixon was promoted to lieutenant. Seeking more excitement, he requested sea duty and was reassigned as the Naval Passenger Control Officer for the South Pacific Combat Air Transport Command, supporting the logistics of operations in the Southwest Pacific Theater. He was the officer in charge of the Combat Air Transport Command at Guadalcanal in the Solomons, and in March 1944 at Green Island just north of Bougainville. His unit prepared manifests and flight plans for C-47 operations and supervised the loading and unloading of the cargo aircraft. For this service, he received a Navy letter of commendation from his commanding officer for meritorious and efficient performance of duty as officer in charge of the South Pacific Combat Air Transport Command. Upon his return to the U.S., Nixon was appointed the administrative officer of the Alameda Naval Air Station in California. In January 1945, he was transferred to the Bureau of Aeronautics Office in Philadelphia to help negotiate the termination of war contracts, and received his second letter of commendation from the Secretary of the Navy for meritorious service, tireless effort, and devotion to duty. Later, Nixon was transferred to other offices to work on contracts and finally to Baltimore. On October 3, 1945, he was promoted to lieutenant commander. On March 10, 1946, he was relieved of active duty. He resigned his commission on New Year's Day 1946. On June 1, 1953, he was promoted to commander. He retired in the U.S. Naval Reserve on June 6, 1966. House of Representatives In 1945, Republicans in California's 12th Congressional District, frustrated by their inability to defeat Democratic Congressman Jerry Vujic, sought a consensus candidate who would run a strong campaign against him. They formed a committee of 100 to decide on a candidate, hoping to avoid internal dissensions which had led to Vujic's victories. After the committee failed to attract higher-profile candidates, Herman Perry, Whittier's Bank of America branch manager, suggested Nixon, a family friend with whom he had served on the Whittier College Board of Trustees before the war. Perry wrote to Nixon in Baltimore. After a night of excited talk between the Nixons, the naval officer responded to Perry with enthusiasm. Nixon flew to California and was selected by the committee. When he left the Navy at the start of 1946, Nixon, 
and his wife returned to Whittier, where Nixon began a year of intensive campaigning. He contended that Voorhees had been ineffective as a congressman, and suggested that Voorhees' endorsement by a group linked to communists meant that Voorhees must have radical views. Nixon won the election, receiving 65,586 votes to Voorhees' 49,994. In Congress, Nixon supported the Taft-Hartley Act of 1947, a federal law that monitors the activities and power of labor unions, and he served on the Education and Labor Committee. He was part of the Herta Committee, which went to Europe to report on the need for U.S. foreign aid. Nixon was the youngest member of the committee and the only Westerner. Advocacy by Herta Committee members, including Nixon, led to congressional passage of the Marshall Plan. In his memoirs, Nixon recounts that he joined the House Un-American Activities Committee at the end of 1947. However, he was already a HUAC member in early February 1947, when he heard enemy number one, Gerhard Eisler and his sister Ruth Fisher testify. On February 18, 1947, Nixon referred to Eisler's belligerence toward HUAC in his maiden speech to the House. Also by early February 1947, Fellow U.S. Representative Charles J. Kirsten had introduced him to Father John Francis Cronin in Baltimore, who shared with Nixon his 1945 privately circulated paper, The Problem of American Communism in 1945, with much information from the FBI's William C. Sullivan. By May 1948, Nixon had co-sponsored a Mount Nixon bill to implement a new approach to the complicated problem of internal communist subversion. It provided for registration of all Communist Party members and required a statement of the source of all printed and broadcast material issued by organizations that were found to be Communist fronts. He served as floor manager for the Republican Party. On May 19, 1948, the bill passed the House by 319 to 58, but failed to pass the Senate. Nixon first gained national attention in August 1948 when as a HUAC member, his persistence helped break the Alga Hiss spy case. While many doubted Whitaker Chambers' allegations that Hiss, a former State Department official, had been a Soviet spy, Nixon believed them to be true and pressed for the committee to continue its investigation. Under suit for defamation filed by Hiss, Chambers produced documents corroborating his allegations. These included paper, and microfilm copies that Chambers turned over to House investigators after having hidden them overnight in a field. They became known as the Pumpkin Papers. Hiss was convicted of perjury in 1950 for denying under oath he had passed documents to Chambers. In 1948, Nixon successfully cross-filed as a candidate in his district, winning both major party primaries, and was comfortably re-elected. Senate in 1949, Nixon began to consider running for the United States Senate against the Democratic incumbent, Sheridan Downey, and entered the race in November. Downey, faced with a bitter primary battle with Representative Helen Gahagan Douglas, announced his retirement in March 1950. Nixon and Douglas won the primary elections and engaged in a contentious campaign in which the ongoing Korean War was a major issue. Nixon tried to focus attention on Douglas' liberal voting record. As part of that effort, a pink sheet was distributed by the Nixon campaign suggesting that, as Douglas' voting record was similar to that of New York Congressman Vito Marcantonio, their political views must be nearly identical. Nixon won the election by almost 20 percentage points. During this campaign, Nixon was first called Tricky Dick by his opponents for his campaign tactics. In the Senate, Nixon took a prominent position in opposing global communism, traveling frequently and speaking out against it. He maintained friendly relations with his fellow anti-communist, the controversial Wisconsin Senator Joseph McCarthy, but was careful to keep some distance between himself and McCarthy's allegations. Nixon also criticized President Harry S. Truman's handling of the Korean War. He supported statehood for Alaska and Hawaii, voted in favor of civil rights for minorities, and supported federal disaster relief for India and Yugoslavia. 
He voted against price controls and other monetary restrictions, benefits for illegal immigrants, and public power. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?